In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the slope of the tangent line at a point and also the equation of the tangent line. I'm going to show you how to do it the easy way using derivatives and then I'm going to show you how to do it using limits because you may have to do it that way depending on where you are in your calculus course. Sometimes you may get a free response question and you have to show your answer using limits. But first, let's talk about the easy way. So you need to know how to find the derivative of a function. The derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. The derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth power. For x to the sixth is 6x to the fifth power. So what do you think it is for x to the seventh? This is going to be 7x to the sixth power. So x to the n becomes n times x raised to the n minus 1. That's the power rule. Now, what if you have 5x to the third power? Let's say if you have a constant in front. What is the derivative of this expression? So focused on x cubed, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So 5 times 3x squared is 15x squared. So try these. Go ahead and find the derivative of these monomials. So the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x four cubed, and 8 times 4 is 32. So it's 32x cubed. Now for 7x to the 9, the derivative of x to the ninth power is 9x to the eighth. And so 7 times 9 is 63. So it's 63x to the 8. Now what about 7x? What is the derivative of 7x? The derivative of 7x is 7. The derivative of negative 3x is negative 3. 5x is 5. Pi x is pi. Another way you could see it is doing it this way. Let's say if you want to find the derivative of 8x. This is the same as 8x to the first power. So using the power rule, it's going to be 8 times 1x to the 0. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1, so this is 8 times 1, which is 8. Now what about the derivative of a constant, like 5 or negative 7 or pi or e without the x? The derivative of a constant is always 0. What can help you to remember this is, let's say if you have 5. 5 is the same as 5x to the 0. If you move the 0 to the front, anything times 0 is 0, so the whole thing is 0. Now, let's say if you have a function, f of x is equal to x cubed plus 4x minus 5 and you want to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1. And also, you want to write the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1. So to find the slope, first find the derivative as a function. The derivative of x to the third is 3x squared. The derivative of 4x is 4. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So this is the derivative as a function. To find the slope of the tangent line, which is the same as the instantaneous rate of change at 1, you just got to plug in 1 into the equation. That is the uh, derivative equation. So it's 3 times 1 plus 4. So it's 7. That's the slope of the tangent line. So m is 7. Now, to write the equation of the tangent line, you need the slope and the xy coordinate point. We have the x-coordinate, which is 1, but we need to find the y-value. So plug in 1 into the original equation. f of 1 is 1 to the third plus 4 times 1 minus 5. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. So we have the point 1 comma 0, and the slope is 7. Once you have a point and a slope, you can write the equation of the tangent line. You can use the slope-intercept form or the point-slope form. Let's start with the point-slope form equation. The 
the point slope form equation is y minus y1, which is equal to m times x minus x1. So x1 is 1, y1 is 0. So y minus 0 is equal to 7x minus 1, which is y on the left side. If you distribute the 7, it's 7x seven minus 7. So this is the equation of the tangent line. Let's try another example. So let's say if f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 5x plus 1. And it occurs at the point, let's say 1 comma, well instead of 1, let's make it 2 and 2 comma 7. If you plug in 2, you should get 7 into the equation. 2 squared is 4 times 4 is 16 minus 5 times 2, which is 10. 16 minus 10 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So how can you find the slope of the tangent line and the equation of the tangent line given this point? So first, let's find the first derivative, f prime of x. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and 2x times 4 is 8x. The derivative of 5x is 5, and the derivative of the constant 1 is 0. So this is the derivative as a function. To find the slope of the tangent line, let's replace x with 2. So 8 times 2 is 16, 16 minus 5 is 11. So this is the slope of the tangent line. So now let's find the equation of the tangent line. This time we're going to use the slope intercept form of a linear equation. So x is 2, y is 7, and m is 11. 7 is equal to 11 times 2 plus b. 11 times 2 is 22. And if we subtract both sides by 22, 7 minus 22 is negative 15. So now we can write the equation. All you need to do is replace m and x. m is 11, b is negative 15. So y is equal to 11x minus 15. So this is the equation of the tangent line. Now let's say that f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 5 and you want to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. How can you do it the easy way and using limits? So the easy way, let's find the derivative f prime of x as a function. The derivative of x squared is 2x times 3, that's 6x. And the derivative of the constant 5 is 0. So that's the derivative as a function. Now the slope of the tangent line at 2 is 6 times 2, which is 12. Now how can we get these answers using limits? So first, how can we get the derivative as a function? To get the derivative as a function using limits, it's going to be the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now what's f of x plus h? To find it, all you need to do is replace x with x plus h. f of x is simply the original function, 3x squared plus 5x. So now remember, f prime of x is 6x and f prime of 2 is 12. So now what we need to do is we need to FOIL x plus h squared. So that's going to be 3 times x plus h times x plus h. And then we have plus 5 minus 3x squared. And let's distribute the negative sign to the 5. So that's going to be negative 5 divided by h. And let's not forget to rewrite the limit expression. So we can see that the 5's will cancel. And so what we now have is the limit as h approaches 0, 
Now let's FOIL x plus h times x plus h. x times x is going to be x squared. And x times h plus h times x, that's 2xh. And then the last part, h times h is h squared minus 3x squared divided by h. So let's distribute the 3 to these terms. So we have the limit as h approaches 0, 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 3x squared divided by h. So 3x squared cancels. Now from what remains, let's factor the GCF. Let's take out an H from the numerator. So it's going to be 6x plus 3H divided by H. So at this point, we can cancel H. So we have the limit as H approaches 0, 6x plus 3H. Once the H on the bottom is gone, you can substitute H with 0. So it's going to be 6x plus 3 times 0, which is simply 6x. So as you can see, we have the derivative as a function. And if we plug in 2 into 6x, it's going to give us 12. So the limit as h approaches 0 for f of x plus h minus f of x over h will give you the derivative as a function. It's going to give you an answer in terms of x. Now, if you want to get the slope of the tangent line, which is 12, if you want to get a number instead of a function in terms of x, use this equation. f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a, f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. So in this case, a is the x value, which is 2. So we want to find f prime of 2. So we need to find the limit as x approaches 2, f of x minus f of 2 divided by x minus 2. So let's see what this is equivalent to. f of x is 3x squared plus 5. And f of 2, we got to plug in 2 into f of x. So it's 3 times 2 squared plus 5 divided by x minus 2. So what can we do to simplify this expression? So let's rewrite 3x squared plus 5. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, but don't forget to distribute the negative sign. So it's negative 12 and negative 5. So now we can cancel the 5s. So we're left with the limit as x approaches 2, 3x squared minus 12 divided by x minus 2. So at this point, what do you think we should do to simplify the expression? What you want to do at this point is you want to factor. Let's take out the GCF in the numerator. So from 3 and negative 12, the GCF is 3. If we take out a 3, we're left with x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2. So we can factor the expression x squared minus 4 using the difference of squares method. So it's going to be x plus 2 times x minus 2. The square root of x squared is x and x. The square root of 4 is 2 and 2. One is going to be positive and the other is going to be negative. So now we can cancel x minus 2. Once you get rid of the x minus 2 in the bottom, you can substitute x with 2. So it's going to be 3 times 2 plus 2, 
which is 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 times 4 is 12. So notice that we have the slope of the tangent line. So that's how you can do it using limits. Now there's another way in which you can find the slope of the tangent line using uh, average rate of change. You can use the average rate of change to approximate the instantaneous rate of change whenever the value of the denominator becomes small. But I'm going to explain what I'm talking about in a moment. So let's say if we have the function f of x is equal to x cubed. And you want to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. So let's see what the answer is going to be. Actually, let's make it 3 instead of 2. So what is f prime of x? We know that the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And if we plug in 3, it's going to be 3 times 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So 27 is the slope of the tangent line. Now let's see if we can estimate the slope of the tangent line using the average rate of change formula. The average rate of change is f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a on the interval a to b. So pick two numbers where 3 is the midpoint. Pick a number that's less than 3 and greater than 3. But 3 has to be the middle of those two numbers, or the average of the two numbers. So we can choose 2 and 4. The average or midpoint of 2 and 4 is 3. So let's find the average rate of change between 2 and 4, or in the interval of 2 and 4. So f of 4 minus f of 2 divided by 4 minus 2. So 4 to the third minus 2 to the third over 2. 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 64 minus 8 is 56. And 56 divided by 2 is 28. Notice that this answer is very close to f prime of 3, which is 27. So it's a fairly good approximation. This, the 27, which represents the slope of the tangent line, is also the instantaneous rate of change of the function at x equals 3. The 28 is the average rate of change over the interval from 2 to 4. The 28 also represents the slope of the secant line. The 27 is the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the secant line is approximately the slope of the tangent line if the tangent line is in between the two points that connects the secant line. Now let's visualize it graphically. So let's say if we have the right side of the equation y is equal to x cubed. And let's say This is 2, this is 4. So the slope of the secant line is a slope between these two points. The secant line touches the graph at two points. The tangent line touches the curve at only one point. So at 3, which is here, if we draw a tangent line, it's going to look something like this. Notice that the slope of the secant line is similar to the slope of the tangent line. If the tangent line, if it has an x value that is between the two points of the secant line, which is 2 and 4, the two lines appear to be almost parallel. Now, notice what happens if I choose two points that is closer to the tangent line. Let's say if I choose this point and this point. If I connect those two points with a line, notice that that line is closer to the tangent line. So as the two points of the secant line approaches the point of the tangent line, the two lines become parallel. 
their slopes become more equal, so to speak, or more equivalent. So we can get a better approximation of the slope of the tangent line if we choose two x values that's closer to 3. So instead of using 2 and 4, let's use 2.9 and 3.1. So let's find the average rate of change in the interval 2.9 to 3.1. Let's see what happens. f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So this time a is 2.9, b is 3.1. So this is f of 3.1 minus f of 2.9 divided by 3.1 minus 2.9. So 3.1 to the third minus 2.9 to the third divided by 0.2. So as the difference between A and B approaches zero, as it gets smaller, the average rate of change becomes equal or gets very close to the instantaneous rate of change, which also means that the slope of the secant line becomes very similar to the slope of the tangent line. 3.1 to the third power is equal to 29.791. 2.9 to the third power is 24.389 divided by 0.2. So 29.791 minus 24.389, that's 5.402 divided by 0.2, and you should get 27.01. Notice that this answer is very close to the real answer of 27. So as you can see, as the difference between A and B, as they get smaller, as it approaches 3, the average rate of change, which represents the slope of the secant line, turns into a very good approximation of the slope of the tangent line. So that's another way you can find the slope of the tangent line using the average rate of change. Now let's work on another problem. Let's say that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x plus 4. And you want to find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1 and also you want to find the equation of the normal line at x equals 1. How would you do it? So first, let's find the y value. To find the y coordinate, let's plug in 1 into the original equation. 1 to the third times 2 times 1 plus 4. So that's 1 minus 2 plus 4. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So we have the point 1 comma 3. Now let's find the slope of the tangent line. So let's find the first derivative. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And the derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. The derivative of a constant is 0. So let's find out what f prime of 1 is equal to. So we can find the slope of the tangent line. So 3 times 1 squared minus 2. That's 3 minus 2, which is 1. So the slope is equal to 1 when x is 1. Now that we have the slope of the tangent line, we can write the equation of the tangent line. So let's use the point slope form equation. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So y1 is 3, x1 is 1. y minus 3 is equal to the slope, which is 1, times x minus 1. So let's distribute the 1, which is just going to be x minus 1. And now all we need to do is add 3. So the equation is x plus 2, or y equals x plus 2. So this is the equation of the tangent line. Now how can we find the equation of the normal line? 
So if the slope is 1, the slope of the normal line, which is perpendicular to the tangent line, it's going to be negative 1. So using the point-slope equation, it's going to be y minus 3, which equals negative 1 times x minus 1. Now, let's distribute the negative 1. So it's negative x plus 1. And then let's add 3 to both sides. So therefore, y is equal to negative x plus 4. That's the equation of the normal line. Now, here's a question for you. So let's say if the slope of the tangent line was 3 over 4, what is the slope of the normal line? Since the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line, you need to flip the fraction and change the positive sign into a negative sign. So try this problem. Let's say if f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 2x plus 1. Find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 2, and also find the equation of the normal line. So first, let's find the y value. So 2 to the 4th minus 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 raised to the 4th power is 16. 2 times 2 is 4. 16 minus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So we have the point 2 comma 13. Now let's find the derivative of f of x. The derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. The derivative of 2x is 2. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So now let's find the slope at 2. 2 to the third power is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. 32 minus 2 is 30. So the slope is 30. Now let's find the equation of the tangent line using the point slope form. I mean the slope intercept form this time. So y is 13, m is 30, x is 2. So let's solve for b. 30 times 2 is 60. So now we got to subtract both sides by 60. 13 minus 60 is negative 47. So b is equal to negative 47. Therefore, the equation of the tangent line is 30x minus 47. All you need to do is replace m and b. Now, if the slope of the tangent line is 30, what is the slope of the normal line? So this is 30 over 1. So it's going to be Instead of positive, it's going to be negative 1 divided by 30. Now let's use the slope-intercept form of the equation again. So we're going to use the same point, but with a different slope. So y is still going to be 13. m is now negative 1 over 30. x is 2. And let's solve for b. So what's 2 over 30? If you divide it backwards, 30 divided by 2 is 15. So 2 over 13, I mean 2 over 30 is 1 over 15. Now to get rid of the fractions, let's multiply everything by 15. 13 times 15 is 195. 15 times negative 1 over 15, the 15's cancel, and you just get negative 1. And then 15 times b is 15b. So if we add 1 to both sides, what we now have is 196 is equal to 15b. So b is 196 divided by 15. To separate b from 15, you need to divide both sides by 15. 196 divided by 15 is a decimal number. So we can leave it as 196 over 15. So the final answer for this problem, the equation of the normal line is y is equal to the slope, negative 1 over 30, 
times x plus b, which is 196 over 15. So now you know how to write the equation of the normal line and the tangent line. And you also know how to find the slope of the tangent line and the slope of the normal line. Now let's say if you receive a question that looks like this. What is the limit as h approaches 0 for x plus h raised to the 4th power minus x to the 4th divided by h? What is the answer? So the first thing you want to do is identify what f of x is equal to. Remember, this whole expression is equal to f prime of x. So if you could find f of x, you could find f prime of x. f of x is basically this portion of the equation. The equation originally looks like this. It's the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So whatever you see here is f of x. So if f of x is x to the fourth, then f prime of x is equal to, we know it's 4x cubed, which means this entire expression is 4x cubed. So if you want to find, let's say, the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1, you can plug it into this equation and you get 4. So sometimes you may get a problem where you might be given this expression and you got to find out what f prime of x is equal to or what the slope of the tangent line is at a point. If you can find f prime of x, plug in the x value, and that's going to give you the slope of the tangent line. So that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.